and hello i am dr nishit vadiboyna consultant medical oncologist rinova century hospitals hyderabad i welcome all for this digital session on men's health brought to you by bayer oncology and i will be the host for uh, today's session this week is observed as international men's health week and uh, what's better day than the father's day to discuss about men's health prostate cancer is one of the most common cancers that we see in men and its incidence is increasing it's often under discussed and today we are going to change this for this we have our guest expert dr ps tatatreya senior consultant medical oncologist rinova somya cancer center hyderabad welcome doctor good morning good morning everyone good morning sir uh, i'll begin uh, with the questions the first question to you is sir uh, how common is prostate cancer in india uh, thank you so much nishit uh, for making me a part of this cancer awareness to all the men across the world we all know that we have something called as the iarc the international agency for research on cancer and globally one in five people will develop cancer during their lifetime one in eight men and one in 11 women die from this deadly disease but the new estimates show that more than 50 million people are living within 5 years of a past cancer diagnosis aging populations globally and socio economic risk factors remain among the primary factors driving this increase i think by and large we understood now that cancer seems to be a lifestyle disease as per the globocan data report of 2020 there are 35540 cases of prostate cancer reported every year in india if you look at different regions of india for example prostate cancer ranks among the top 10 in all regions across the country you take trivandrum you take mumbai you take kolkata it's the second most common cancer and that's why it's important to be abreast of all the developments with regard to prostate cancer because this corroborates strongly with men's health very well said sir uh, it's, uh, it's 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 understandable that the uh, prostate cancer incidence is uh, increasing uh, year by year uh, coming to the next question sir what is your role of prostate gland in men's health the prostate gland is a very important male reproductive accessory organ the most important function is to produce the prostatic fluid now this prostatic fluid together with the sperm cells from the testicles and fluids from some other, from some other neighboring glands makes up the semen the muscles of the prostate also ensure that the semen is forcefully pressed into the urethra and then expelled outwards during the male ejaculation it's also involved in hormone metabolism the male sex hormone testosterone is transformed to its biologically active form dihydrotestosterone in the prostate and that's why this gland becomes a very important uh, organ in the male reproductive system nicely put sir uh, coming to the, going to the next question Uh, how is uh, prostate cancer diagnosed as with all cancers whenever our patients come to meet us a thorough history and clinical examination and especially a physical examination by doing a per rectal examination or a digital rectal examination becomes an important tool which gives us a clue about the presence of prostate cancer in that particular male serum psa a very simple blood test which is also called as the prostate specific antigen works as a diagnostic tool as a follow up tool and also in prostate cancer screening very few cancers can be screened and one such cancer is prostate cancer a simple blood test like serum psa in males above the age of 50 years can give a indication of prostate problems and especially a clue towards is this male by chance harboring a prostate cancer various imaging techniques like transrectal ultrasound bone scans ct scans and mri also aid 
in the diagnosis of prostate cancer. A PSMA PET CT scan, a prostate specific membrane antigen PET CT scan gives an idea about the staging of how far has the prostate cancer spread. As we all know, cancers are diagnosed essentially with a pathology proof. And so biopsy from the neoplastic areas, from the cancerous areas or from the prostate gland will give the definitive conclusion that this person is harboring prostate cancer. Unlike other cancers, in prostate cancer, importantly, the pathologist will also report what is called as the Gleason score. So all the way from history to clinical examination to some radiology investigations and a pathology proof will give us the diagnosis of prostate cancer and more importantly, the staging of prostate cancer. And our treatments depends on the staging. Remember, prostate cancer and other cancers too are curable if diagnosed early and then treated appropriately. And so on this uh, World Men's Health Day, I would like to clearly inform that prostate cancer can be screened and diagnosed early by doing screening for a simple blood test called as serum PSA levels or serum prostate specific antigen levels. Excellent, sir. It gives all the necessary information for our uh, listeners today. Uh, the next question is, who is at risk of getting prostate cancer? Prostate cancer is not clearly linked to any preventable causes. The risk of developing prostate cancer depends on many things, which means the cause of prostate cancer can be multifactorial. Anything that can increase the risk of getting a disease is called as a risk factor and different cancers have different risk factors. Having one or more of these risk factors doesn't mean that you will definitely get that cancer. But prostate cancer is a disease of the elderly usually. For instance, in the US, the median age of getting prostate cancer is 66 years. In UK, it's around 75 years. In India, the peak age is above 65 years. A positive family history, especially some mutations in the genes like BRCA1, BRCA2, etc. can again increase the risk of getting prostate cancer in that particular individual. Men of black ethnicity possibly seem to have a higher rate of prostate cancer in that population. A plant-based diet can help reduce the risk. Again, lifestyle is something which is very important, a risk factor for many of the cancers, including prostate cancer. So, less of physical activity, a, a sedentary lifestyle and obesity also seem to be contributory risk factors for getting prostate cancer. Wonderful, sir. Uh, going to the next question, what is the impact of prostate cancer on sexual health of men? I think that's a very important question asked by Dr. Nishit because prostate cancer does cause some sexual dysfunction. In addition to that, not only the disease, even the treatment for the disease can sometimes cause mild or moderate sexual dysfunction as a side effect because this disease is predominantly hormone dependent. Prostate cancer is dependent. It thrives. The nourishment for the prostate cancer cells is the male hormone testosterone. And that's why an important component of treatment is something called as androgen deprivation therapy. We deprive that particular patient who has prostate cancer of the male hormone and that ultimately leads to involution and regression of the prostate cancer cells and affects long-term cure rates or control rates. So sexual health is something which does get impacted, but with the current available psychological measures, counseling, and also various medical bar surgical means, this can be addressed very comfortably. So that should not be a cause of concern. And this can be tackled very effectively. Great, sir. Uh, going to the uh, most important question, sir. Uh, what are the treatment options for prostate cancer? Excellent, Nishit. 
I think it's very important for all of us to understand that not every patient of prostate cancer needs to be started on treatment immediately. There is something called as expectant management because this is usually, by and large, a slowly growing disease. So we have time to react something called as active surveillance, which means we monitor the prostate cancer closely by performing PSA tests and other investigations regularly and treating the cancer only if it is growing at a rapid pace or is causing some symptoms. There is something called as the PSA doubling time. So how fast is the prostate specific antigen levels in the blood doubling, which might be able to give us the impetus to start treatment or go for something called as watchful waiting as well, which means we treat the patient when the symptoms develop and this is something linked to the life expectancy. For men who are expected to live for 10 years or more, we can always go slow and not hurry up in treating these patients. On the other hand, this doesn't apply to all patients. And so, if it's an early prostate cancer, a surgical prostatectomy, which means using surgical means to get the disease out, is an important treatment option to cure very early prostate cancer. For some reason, if surgery is not feasible, for some various comorbid conditions, if radical surgery can't be performed, I think we don't have to get disheartened because radical radiation therapy in the form of x-rays to treat the prostate cancer is almost equally effective and it's the, the outcomes are identical whether the patient gets a radical prostatectomy or radical radiation therapy. In addition to that, other therapies used in treatment of prostate cancer are, as I mentioned to before, hormone therapy or androgen deprivation therapy. That's an important component of almost all prostate cancer patients. You deprive that particular individual suffering from prostate cancer with the male hormone testosterone because that is food for the prostate cancer cells. And that leads to a very important aspect in the treatment of prostate cancer. In addition to that, sometimes we end up using chemotherapies, cryotherapies, high-intensity focused ultrasounds, and sometimes immunotherapies also later in the course of disease. With all these measures and with multiple disciplines involved in the treatment of prostate cancer, though it is a common cancer and ranks second or third in the top cities in our country and among the top 10 in the entire country overall, the mortality from prostate cancer is way below when compared to other cancers. So though more persons may be diagnosed with prostate cancer, but very few people die from prostate cancer. So that's something which is reassuring because of the incorporation of various faculties and various oncology colleagues and urology colleagues coming together to combat this disease and to cancel cancer. That's a wonderful information, sir. It's a very uh, difficult, uh, lengthy uh, answer, but you have put it in a very simplified way for all the listeners to understand very easily. And coming to the last question, sir, uh, how quality of life can be maintained among patients with prostate cancer? I think this is something I wish Dr. Nishit wants all of us to be informed that prostate cancer and its treatment can cause disease-specific problems, for example, urinary dysfunction or sometimes mild sexual dysfunction. Also, they can cause general problems in the quality of life, diminished mental functioning, diminished physical functioning, reduced capacity to work, uh, having fatigue or asthenia. We also find evidence of several significant social risk factors like ethnicity and education status also contributing to the slightly dampened quality of life outcomes in men treated for prostate cancer. Healthy active lifestyle, group education, proper counseling of our patients involving various support interventions are therefore increasingly important among men with prostate cancer. 
So quality of life issues are present initially. Yes, the diagnosis of cancer can send a shiver down the spine of even the strongest of men or women. But with regards to prostate cancer, with regard to the impact of prostate cancer on men's health, I think it's not a cause of grave concern. And this can be tackled effectively by a teamwork involving the patient, the family members, the relatives, the friends, and the entire oncology team and the uro-oncology team involved in the care of our prostate cancer patients. Thank you so much and good health to everyone. Thank you, sir. That was very uh, nicely put. What would be your message on this International Men's Health Week and Father's Day for all the men? International Men's Health Week and Father's Day today. I think it's important that all of us understand the contribution that we all men uh, do to the society, to the family. And so my message would be we are the backbone. We are also at the forefront to make sure that the nation progresses and the family, on the other hand, is in harmony. And this relationship in which the fulcrum is all men across the world, we sometimes forget to focus on our own health. So my, my most important message is, please do keep getting executive health checkups done or master health checkups done once in a year or at least once in two years. And remember, cancer is curable if diagnosed early. And that's why cancer screening should be an important part of all such executive or master health checkups. Serum prostate-specific antigen levels has shown to diagnose prostate cancer early. And that's why you end up getting more and more cure rates from this disease and that's why you find a disparity between the incidence which is like second or third most common but the mortality or the death rate is very less with prostate cancer cancer is curable if diagnosed early and that's why i think let's all not forget screening for cancer with regard to breast cancer it's mammography with prostate cancer serum psa levels with colon cancer, we talk about colonoscopy and stool occult blood tests. And lastly, for uh, cervical cancer, we talk about the pap smear, etc. Thank you so much, Nishit. Excellent, sir. I thank uh, Dr. Uh, P.S. Dattatreya, sir, uh, the uh, senior uh, consultant medical oncologist, for his excellent informative uh, talk uh, for all the viewers which is going to give us, give them uh, 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 great support uh, in uh, understanding about the disease and it is going to help them. And uh, I would like to thank Bayer Oncology for giving us this opportunity in raising awareness on this International Men's Health Week and Father's Day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.